there is at least one other type of large mammal that seems to have become smaller on Flores in particular, and that is Stegodon, a kind of um, ancient relative of elephants. And so there is a dwarf Stegodon found on this island, suggesting that this is not an entirely unique event, even on Flores. And certainly we have examples of dwarfism of large vertebrates and mammals on many other islands. Um, there's been, like I, I mentioned a little bit earlier, there has been some debate surrounding, for example, the small brain size of um, Homo floresiensis and whether that fits with an island dwarfing model, I guess. Uh, and in part, it depends on what you think is the starting point. So if you think that the most, the youngest populations of Homo erectus on Java are the starting point, well, they have pretty big brains, and that would be a mm. really extreme reduction. Mm. If you start with something a little smaller, like maybe the, the earliest Homo erectus known outside of Africa from Eurasia, the reduction isn't quite as extreme. So there's kind of a lot of factors to think about with regard to evaluating how likely it is that this represents an island dwarfing event. Isn't it true though, Karen, that like uh, on islands, sometimes a small animal, I, I believe there's, there's rats and um, uh, reptiles on floors, which got bigger. So things get bigger and things get smaller. Yes. And so it, it Yes, that's correct. Some things get bigger, some things get smaller. It kind of depends on the the um, particular, I don't know, the particular features of that species and also the environment they're in. Whether they are they find themselves in greater competition, whether there's a shift in the predators that they are trying to avoid. It depends on the resources available to them, and so those diff that kind of a combination of those characteristics mm. on islands allows some species to get smaller, some species actually get larger, and I think, but I would have to double check, I think that the uh, there are some reptiles called Komodo dragons on the island of Flores mm. that actually got quite large um, on this particular island. And so, yeah, we see these kind of unusual um, kind of dwarfism and gigantism events happening with animals on islands when they're isolated and their kind of situation changes from the mainland. And of course, this would happen over generations, over a long period of time. Yes, and so that raises a good point, particularly with regard to the Homo floresiensis material. There are other hominin sites, so uh, mostly, but not entirely, stone tools elsewhere farther east on Flores. So in this area called the Soa Basin, there's a site called Matamenge. And for a long time, there have been stone tools known from there around, starting around 800,000 years ago, actually. And since the discovery of Homo floresiensis, they have now recovered a very small amount of hominin material, I believe. And um, it doesn't, there's not a lot of it, and so there's not a lot of anatomical detail to look at, but it appears to potentially also be a little bit small in, in size, and certainly it's earlier in time, closer to 700 or 800,000 years ago. So if, and it's a big if, but if that shares a special relationship with Homo floresiensis, then this process of potential body size reduction, if we think that Homo erectus is the ancestor, that might have begun, um, you know, six or 700,000 years before we find them uh, at the, in the Liangbua cave. And, and possibly earlier, but that's sort of the earliest evidence we have elsewhere on Flores.